Recently, I've had a lot of people ask me questions about the actual process of using my CNC and making a carving. Questions such as, what software do you use? What feeds and speeds do you use? And where do you get the files and designs for carvings? So in today's video, I'm going to cover all that and more by making a complete step-by-step -step walkthrough of how I start with an idea in my head and turn it into a finished product using my 3018 CNC. Before we begin, I just want to take a moment to ask you to subscribe. A lot of hard work goes into each one of my videos, but only about 1% of my viewers are actually subscribed, so it's very much appreciated if you support the channel by subscribing. And with that being said, let's get started. So the first step to this whole process of making a project with my CNC is an idea. And if you're looking for projects to make or are out of ideas, the best advice I can give you is to just look around the internet. There are plenty of CNC communities you can follow on different platforms, and even watching these videos might give you some inspiration on what to make. As for what project we're going to be making today, I saw a recent comment asking if this machine is suitable for making a small Christmas tree ornament. And although Christmas has already passed, that sounds like a great idea and is of course a perfect small project for this machine. So today, we're going to try and make it. After you've decided what you're going to make, in my case, a small Christmas tree ornament, you have to figure out what material you're going to make it from. Wood is good for most projects, including artwork, and that's what we're going to be using today. However, depending on your project, you might want to use a different material, such as aluminum or plastic, if your part needs to be stronger or water resistant. Instead, I'm going to pick something that's a solid piece of wood, like this floorboard sample I found in my scraps bin. With all that out of the way, we can log into a computer and start creating the design for a Christmas tree ornament. For this project, and for most other projects, I use easel. Easel is a free online software made by Inventables and is used for 2D or 2.5D CNC work. If you're using Easel for the first time, you'll need to create an Inventables account and install a driver for your CNC, but that's pretty much all the setup needed in terms of software. Now that we have Easel open, we can start creating our project. This online software has many useful tools to help you create carvings. The shape tool, as is hopefully self-evident, can create shapes. The text tool can create text of different sizes and fonts. And the image tool can be used to turn an image into a carving. There are a few settings for each of these tools that you might want to play around with, but I won't be covering them in this video because they could take up a whole video just on their own. However, these tools are pretty easy to learn, so I suggest you play around with them and see what the software can do. For today's project, we're going to be first engraving the design that we want on our ornament using the image conversion tool, and then second, cutting out the overall ornament shape out of a piece of wood using, of course, the shape tool. Here, I have the image I want to put on my carved ornament. It's a simple Christmas tree I found on Google, and if you're following along at home, you can use whatever design or image you want. You can also find simplified 2D images of objects by adding DXF to your Google search. I'm going to import this image, adjust some settings to make it look right, and position it on my build plate. I will select either cut on perimeter, interior, exterior, or pocket cut based on whatever looks best for my image. In my case, I'll select cut on shape path. In hindsight, this wasn't the best idea as the CNC carves every line twice and it doesn't turn out to look very clean in the final product, so I'd advise against doing what I did here. Since this first cut will be doing more engraving on the surface rather than actual cutting, I'll set the cut depth to 1 16th of an inch deep. As for cut settings, the material size and type can be set in this menu. In the next menu, the type of bit can be set. I will use one of these small v-bits to engrave this part of the project. However, I will configure it as a normal 1 32nd bit in easel. In the last menu, I usually use the default settings for feed rate and depth of cut, but because I have an upgraded 500 watt spindle, I can increase these values a little by selecting manual. If you want to see the video where I upgrade my spindle motor to this 500 watt spindle, I left a link to the 500 watt spindle upgrade video in the description below. When you hit carve, the software will take you through an intuitive step-by-step -step guide to starting your carving. First, we clamp down the material we want to cut or engrave to the bed of our CNC. We will also add a piece of wood called a spoil board under our work material so that we can cut all the way through the work in a later CNC operation. Second, you will need to insert a desired tool into the collet of the CNC and tighten it. In our case, this will be a V-bit. V-bit. 
and last, the zero point of the CNC needs to be set. The zero point is the place where the carving will start, at the bottom left of the work material. This is also an important setting to get right, because if it isn't set correctly, the carving will go shallower or deeper into the wood than desired. After starting the carving, make sure the cut begins as you want it, and it's suggested to keep a very close eye on your CNC as it carves, because you want to be nearby if something goes wrong. Now a few words of caution and recommendations as you use your CNC. You might want to think about investing a few extra dollars into a better USB cable than the one that comes with your machine. In my case, the cheap cable caused me many headaches of jobs stopping in the middle for no apparent reason, or in the worst case, the bit driving down into the CNC table. When I switched out the USB cable, the problem stopped, so I think it's definitely a worthwhile investment. It's also recommended that you have some kind of enclosure surrounding your CNC, so that while carving, chips getting sprayed everywhere don't make a mess. When I was first starting out with my CNC, I would just hold a vacuum near the cutting head to suck up all the chips when carving, but that was a little time consuming to just sit there and vacuum for 15 minutes while the carving was going, so I currently use this large tub to contain all the chips until after the carving is finished. I'll vacuum up the chips and it looks like this. I ended up running this operation for a second time just to clean up the carving. Now we will repeat the same process of creating a design in easel and carving it, but this time we'll cut out the outer shape of the ornament. Back in easel, we will choose the shape we want to cut out. In my case, I'll choose a triangle because it fits my Christmas tree well. In order to cut all the way through the material, we will set the cut depth to be slightly deeper than the thickness of the material on our CNC. As for cut settings for this cut, I will be using a 1 8 inch square end mill, so that's the type of bit I'll select. In the last menu, I will again use slightly higher than default feed rate and depth per pass, because I have an upgraded 500 watt spindle. After clicking carve, we can change the bit to the correct end mill, and set the zero point of the CNC once again. This zero point should not be moved from where the last CNC operation ended, so both operations are lined up with one another. To switch out the bit, however, I had to move the work away from the cutting head. To ensure that the zero point will be lined up, I kept track of how far I moved the CNC and moved it back after I was finished swapping out the end mill. Easel has a feature where you can adjust the speed that the bit moves after you've started a CNC job. You can adjust the feed rate manually during the carving if your CNC is going too fast or too slow. If you're getting a lot of chatter, you can slow down the feed rate, but alternatively, you can speed up the feed rate if the bit is rubbing. This is important to fix because if the bit is rubbing, it will cause the tool to heat up and shorten its lifespan. I originally didn't leave enough of the end mill sticking out of the collet chuck, so I couldn't cut all the way through the material. I had to restart this operation a second time with more stick out to finish cutting the ornament out. After vacuuming up all the chips, this is how the final ornament turned out. The other side doesn't look great because I didn't start with a flat piece of wood on both sides. And the ornament is overall very thick. If I wanted this to turn out even better, I could have started with a solid piece of wood that was thin and flat on both sides, and repeated the engraving on the opposite side as well. I could have also made the carving lines not double wide on my design. However, this was just a proof of concept showing what the CNC can do. There are lots of other small projects, just like this one, that this type of beginner CNC can also be used for. Some of these projects include custom-made coasters, gifts such as the one I made for Mother's Day, link in the description, and fun toys such as this tilt maze. Your imagination is the only limit to what you can make with this CNC, so armed with the knowledge from this video, go out and make some fun projects of your own. I hope this beginner's guide was useful to anyone starting out in the CNC world, but if I left something important out of the video, or if you have any unanswered questions, you can leave those in the comments down below, and I will try my best to answer them. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and if you want to see a part 2 where I show you the process of 3D printing from start to finish, you can let me know that in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.